We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Hello, crafty friends, and welcome back to Christmas All Year Collab 2024. My name is Robin Pitts. If you're new to my channel or you're a returning subscriber, welcome. Since I did not upload a new project in July. I'm doing that today. And boy, have I got a special treat for you. I am going to be revisiting my all-time favorite Christmas project, which is the Christmas Tree Advent Calendar. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through this beautiful tree that I created, and then we'll make one together step by step. Created this 25 day Christmas tree advent calendar using a new digital file by My Scrap Chick. Paper collection that I used is by Craftsmart and it's called Christmas Plaids. I love using plaids during Christmas, I just think it's a very elegant touch. And so the base of this Christmas tree is all in green plaids, and I have hints of gold glittered boxes throughout. This tree is quite sizable. It measures 16 inches from the top to the bottom. I love this huge bow on the top. It's double layered and it's got these wonderful tails that are hanging off the side. There are six layers in this tree and I have adorned it with several embellishments and Christmas decorations from my stash. On the top here, we have this adorable little pickup truck with a Christmas tree. We've got apples and pears. I really love the numbers. The numbers are cut in a gold glitter. They have a green shadow, which is attached to a white shimmer background. And then I have a red foil scallop circle in the back. Each of these boxes open, and there is ample size to include a nice present. As you can see, I've alternated the greens with the gold glitter. Here we have this nutcracker. We've got a little candy cane and a Christmas tree. And do you notice? This Christmas tree also rotates. I will show you in the tutorial how to create the rotating base. We've got this wonderful glittered bird that's perched on these greens with berries. We've got more candy canes. We have pine cones and cherries, poinsettias. We have these glittered stockings. I also have included this red Christmas tree. As a comparison, this is the shabby chic tree that I created last year, and I love both the versions of the tree. With a simple change of paper, you can make this Christmas advent tree look completely different. Also, you can use this for other occasions. This could be used for a birthday. It could be used as a Halloween advent calendar, and you would just create 31 boxes instead of 25. You can use it for the 12 days of Christmas. There's tremendous amount of versatility. Now that I've given you an overview of this, I'm going to grab my materials and we'll make this together. I'll be right back. I've gathered the materials to make our 25-day Christmas tree advent calendar. I am using a digital file by My Scrap Chick, which I have imported into Cricut Design Space and cut out on my Cricut Maker. The paper collection that I'm using is by Craftsmart. I purchased this at Michael's and it's called Christmas Plaids. I love this paper collection and when I see plaids, I always think of Christmas time. Included in your file will be two different boxes. Now, you will need to cut out 25 boxes. These are the smaller boxes and we're going to assemble one together. You're also going to have a larger box which will go on the very top. You'll also have these pieces and they are scored along the center. These are going to be the latches that attach the boxes together. So you need to cut 25 of those. You'll also have your numbers, and in your file, you will receive several different layers. I have the gold glitter layer. Behind that, I have a dark green shadow. I have the champagne glittery white in the background, and then this red foil scalloped in the back. I really like the way this looks. I think it has a nice, elegant presentation to it. You'll also receive pieces to make the bow topper you receive the two bottom tails and the layering bow. So this will go on the very top of your tree. 
So I'm going to clear off my desktop and we're going to make the very last box, which is the largest box, to go on top. This is assembled the same way as the smaller box. To make the box, you'll need to fold along all of the score lines, which I've done already. The one thing that's different with this box is that there is no open part like this. You won't need to open the box because it's just for purely decorative purposes. So what we're going to do is grab the box, this is a lid, and we're going to glue these panels on just like so to create a little box, okay? So we will put glue on this tab here, glue that into place. And as this is dry and you want to turn it over and burnish it with your fingers or a bone folder. And then you want to glue on the next tab. Okay. And then we're going to glue on these last two tabs here. And we're going to fold these in at the same time. And then you just want to line it up next to the score mark. Okay, and then we can close our box. So this is the top box, and you can see that it is slightly larger than the smaller box. Next, what we need to do is assemble the boxes. I've assembled the boxes for the bottom layer, and to make this stack, on the first level, you're going to have seven boxes. On the second level, you're going to have six boxes, and then five boxes, four, three, and then one box. So that is the order that you will have. So you'll have six layers. In order to attach the boxes together, we have these little hinges. And so what you're going to do is put glue on one side, and we're going to align that on the back of the box. So you have your cutout here. This is the front of the box, just like so. And we're going to put this flap right against the score line to the back of the box. You can either center it or you can have it attached to the bottom. Then you want to put glue on the second hinge and we're going to attach the second box right next to it. So this is what it looks like from the front. And this is the way it looks from the back. So let's go ahead and attach all of the boxes so that they are in a circle. So we have our first layer completed with the seven boxes. One thing that I wanted to point out about the hinges is that you should save the leftover scrap paper from these boxes. Let me show you. This is one page that I've cut out two boxes on, but I've cut the hinges here, here, and on this side. So you don't want to waste this paper. You can use it to create all of the hinges that you need to create the box. Okay, so let's finish assembling each of the layers. Now that we have all of the boxes attached, before we glue on each of the layers, I want to create a base. So I have cut out a piece of black chipboard that measures 10 inches. And this is a black two millimeter chipboard. I've also cut out a piece of decorative cardstock. So the tree will be resting on the base just like so and this will be the tree skirt. I also want to create an element that allows the tree to rotate so I have cut another piece of black chipboard and covered it with designer cardstock. This is 8 inches and I have another piece which is 6 inches. I have found the center of the 8 inch piece I've stuck in a brad in the center. The bottom piece we don't need to add decorative paper to because it's going to be covered. So I'm going to feed the brad through this smaller piece of chipboard and I'm going to fold back the little prongs here and make it as flat as I can. And then I'm going to put a piece of tape to cover up these prongs here. I have attached the tape and as you can see this piece freely turns around just like so. So now what we're going to do is we're only going to put glue on this smaller piece. You don't want to put it on this outer rim otherwise it won't turn. But you want to get good glue coverage on the center of this piece right here and then we're going to center it on our base. And then we will glue the base of the tree to the center. 
okay and then this will turn as you can see just like so so I'm going to put my glue on this inner circle okay and I'm gonna set this down in the center I'm gonna eyeball it if you want to be exact you can go ahead and measure it I'm gonna give this time to dry and then we'll start to glue down our first layer now we're going to glue the first layer on and we're going to put glue on the inner part of the boxes okay so you don't have to go all the way out but just around the perimeter here so that there's a nice strong adhesion and then you want to center it on the base now we're going to glue on the second tier which has six boxes and we want to offset these boxes so that they're in between the bottom boxes that we've just glued on now this will not be a perfect fit but you can eyeball it and just like we glued down the first level we're going to put glue on half of the boxes and so you want to make sure that you've centered this on top of the first tier now we're going to do that for each level all the way to the top box which is the largest box I have glued together all of the layers of my Christmas tree advent calendar. Now I'm going to assemble the large bow that's going to go on top. So we have these two pieces, which are the tails. I'm going to put a little bit of hot glue right here in the center. Okay, and glue that down. Then we have these pieces. And what I want to do is take a tool and curve the sides of the bow. We're going to do that for the first and second layer. I'm going to take my hot glue and attach these pieces just like so. I'm just going to put it on the edge of that piece. And I don't want to bend this because I want to keep the curve of the bow. And then I'm going to take this piece, and this is going to fit right on top, but I'm not going to glue it all the way down. So I'm just going to glue it in the center and then attach it so that you have this nice piece that looks like this. Okay, so I'm just going to put this right in the center. And then put hot glue on the edge and glue that in just like so. It makes a pretty bow. Okay, and I'm gonna do this for the other piece. So we have the two pieces of our bow. What I wanna do is give this piece a little bit more curve. So I'm just gonna curve the bottom part and the top part, and this will hang over the sides of the very top box. And then these pieces are gonna be glued together like so and then glued right in the center of the bow. So let's add a little glue right here. And we'll attach the two together just like so. Let that hold for a few seconds. And then this piece is gonna be glued on right in the center. And then the finishing piece is the center. So we're gonna just put a little glue on this piece here and make a little circle. And then I'm gonna wrap this piece around it. To close it up. Okay, and then this piece is gonna be glued right in the center and stick this down and there is our bow and that's going to go on top of our tree so I'm going to attach the bow onto this large box and then I'm going to randomly attach these numbers on the boxes once I do that I'm going to start decorating the box and then I'll be back with the final reveal I've completed the tree and I love the way this turned out. This measures 16 inches from the top to the bottom. And as you can see, I can spin it around. That base works perfectly. I love this bow on the top. It's a very grand bow and I love the red 
contrasted by the gold glitter. It really sets the framework for the tree. I've added in lots of fun embellishments and ornaments from my stash, but this really is a wonderful statement piece. And all of the boxes open, so you have ample size to include a goodie inside. This concludes my review of my Christmas tree advent calendar. Hopefully I've inspired you with new and creative ideas. If you like this project, please take a moment to give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye for now. Happy crafting and happy holidays. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas.